Hey folks, welcome back to combo class. Well, it's a windy and rainy week in the combo classroom, so I'm going to film this one indoors. And today, I want to tell you about a really simple technique that allows you to easily translate a number into another numeral base. Now, there are sort of two ways we could translate another base in relation to base 10. We could try and translate a string from another base back into base 10, or could try to do the slightly trickier direction of taking a string we know in base 10 and trying to write that in another base. Since we're familiar with how to write quantities in base 10, this upper translation is sort of like taking a digit string from some context and finding what quantity it represents, whereas the lower translation is more like taking a quantity and trying to find the right digit string for it in some context. I've made several episodes about numeral bases before, but mostly involving this upper type of translation, and I realized I've never really explained how to do the opposite which can be a bit trickier unless you know the right shortcut. So today I'm going to show you how to translate in either of those directions, and along the way I'll also clarify some of the most important patterns in how different bases are connected. Now the type of bases we'll be looking at are standard positional numeral systems that are basically different variations of the same structure that defines base 10. Positional numeral systems each have their own language of single digit characters and have different spots in a number that represent different amounts. For example, in the type I call basic bases, each of the places represents a power of that base number, and the possible digits range from zero to a symbol for one less than the base number. In base 10, one, two, three, four as a number is 1,234, and the reason it's the quantity we associate with that is because it's four copies of 10 to the zeroth power, which is four copies of one, plus three copies of 10 to the first power, which is three tens, plus two copies of 10 to the second power, which is two hundreds, plus one 10 to the third power, which is one thousand. Note that these rules are also why base one isn't included among these basic bases, because you'd have to treat its digit set differently. If you just went from zero to B minus one there, you'd just be using the digit zero, which won't work. So our basic bases can have any whole number two or larger for their base number. And with these rules for what the places represent, each of these basic bases would call itself base one zero, which is why I prefer to write out the name for the word like base T-E-N, because although these words were still named after the base 10 system, we need some sort of placeholder to describe it. And I think the written out version makes it a little more clear that we're talking about a quantity and not a digit string. Similar to how one zero could represent any of these basic base numbers, digit strings composed of a one followed by more than one zero essentially represent what are called perfect powers. Perfect powers are numbers that can be expressed as some whole number to the power of another whole number with the exponent being larger than one. In base 10, digit strings of this form represent powers of 10 beyond the first power. And on the big scale of all the basic bases, digit strings of this form represent perfect powers larger than one in general. Other numbers have a form that equals a bunch of powers of the base added together, but those powers are also each raised to some coefficient, which are the digits that appeared in the string. Here's an example. If we were in base six, this would mean four ones, because six to the zeroth power is still one, 
plus three sixes, plus two thirty sixes, which is six squared, plus one two hundred sixteen, which is six cubed. And that gives us 310, which is the answer to that first question. And in general, translating a digit string from another base back to base 10 is as easy as taking each digit, individually multiplying them by the base number to some corresponding exponent, and adding them all together. But what about trying to translate in the other direction? How can we use all these rules and patterns about bases to figure out some digit string that lines up with the quantity 1,234 in a different base, like having in base six some amount from zero to five of ones, plus some amount of sixes, plus some amount of 36s, and finding the right combination that gives us that quantity when all added together. First, let me note a miniature fact which is that if I just want to know how many digits are gonna be in a representation of some number in some base, I just need to look at which powers of that base number the target number is in between. Like if I want to know this for 1,234, how many digits will that have in some base or another? Well, in base six, since that number is larger than six to the third power, but smaller than six to the fourth power, that exponent four of the first power larger than it is how many digits it will have. Or similarly, if I looked in base two, 1,234 is larger than two to the 10th power, but smaller than two to the 11th power. So that number would have 11 digits when written in base two. But what if I wanted to know more than just how many digits there were? In previous episodes, I've mentioned that the last digit of a number's representation in a given base can be seen as the remainder that that number would have if divided by that base number. And it turns out it's not just the last digit. We can calculate all of the digits in a representation using remainders. Here's how this cool technique works. We take the number as we know it to be written in our base, and our first step is to divide by the base number that we want to represent this in. So in this case, let's say we're dividing it by six, and you could use long division if you needed to calculate that, but we could also do this one in our heads. Here we've gotten 205, with a remainder of four. And we're gonna set aside that remainder and save it for later. And we're gonna keep going with the 205 that we got as the whole number part of our answer. And now divide that by six. Our answer here is 34, and that does leave a remainder of one. And now we're gonna take that 34 that we had left after setting aside that remainder two, divide that by six. That now gives us five with a remainder of four. And now we're at a point where if we try and divide the five that's left by six, we get zero with a remainder of five because we couldn't get any whole numbers out of that. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take each remainder we got along the way and write them in reverse order. That gives me five, four, one, four. And that is our answer. That's how we write 1,234 in base six. Here's another example. Let's say we wanted to write the quantity 1,000 in base 12. Well, we can take 1,000 divided by 12, and that results in 83 with a remainder of four. And then 83 divided by 12 
is six with a remainder of 11, and then six, trying to divide it by 12, is zero with a remainder of six. And now if we take these and write them backwards, First, converting the 11 into some one-digit symbol. Typically, a B is used here, the letter A being for another base's single-digit symbol for 10, and B as our current placeholder or stand-in for whatever one-digit symbol another base may have for 11. And then we write these in reverse order, six, B, four, and that is how base 12 would write the number we know as one zero zero zero. Of course, they would have different symbols for the six and four also probably. We could write it all in a base neutral way, like amounts of dots. I would put 11 dots in one and four dots in one, or like little stacks of certain amounts of squares together. But it's a lot easier to let ourselves use a place holder, which are the numbers or sometimes letters that we already know because we have no idea what symbol another base might actually use. Really what this says is this would look like some digit that means six, some digit that means 11, and then some digit that means four. And in general, this direction of translation from base 10 to another base may seem trickier, but we can do it with this easy technique of dividing, collecting remainders, and then reversing their order. Well, now you know how to translate numbers to or from base 10. And if I wanted to translate between two different bases that neither of them were base 10, like from base six to base 12, I could just combine these techniques, first going from base six translated into base 10, and then what we knew the number's quantity to be from its base 10 representation, translating that into base 12. Anyway, this was all related to whole numbers in what I call basic bases, so let me know if you can think about how this technique would or wouldn't apply to some of the more obscure bases we've met in the past or to other forms of number. And that's all. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning some things with me today. If you want some extra combo content, make sure to check out my bonus Demotro channel. And special thanks to the people who help make my videos possible, such as my Patreon supporters and YouTube members on the Demotro channel. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you again soon.